Hello, and welcome to Launch Left's Big Up. We are joined by Liz Goldwyn of the Sex Ed Podcast. Hi, Liz. I haven't seen you in years. It's so nice to see you. I'm so happy to see you. I just want to beam myself there and give you a big hug. I know. Too too many years. It's been years, I think, since I've seen you in person, or at least a couple. Yeah, I think the last time was when you were singing at Karen Elson was doing a dinner oh, in LA yeah. and you sang. That was probably like 2019, wow. maybe at this or, point. Yeah. yeah. Or seven or 18 even. Eight, uh, yeah. Anyway, we're here brain. now. We're here now <laughs> in virtual space, which is uh, where where a lot of stuff seems to be happening. I mean, there's entire worlds being built now. Decentraland. I don't know if you've heard of it. We won't go down that rabbit hole. But I am so happy to be joined by you and to get a little information to have our watchers and listeners uh, absorb some of the great work that you do and what it is that you do. So I just wanted you to share about the Sex Ed podcast and site and all the good stuff you do. Yeah, so my decentralized virtual world, which is the sex ed, has been a dream of mine actually since I was 13 and working my first job, which was as a paid intern first at Planned Parenthood in Santa Monica, California. And then I organized their I organized their media library and I would field phone the phone calls. And back then people would come and like check out in pamphlets and books. And it was a lot of like, I was 13. Okay. So it was a lot of kids, my own age. And then like like a lot of single parents, a lot of single fathers actually looking for information about sex, about puberty, about, you know, other kids asking me like, how do you give a good blow job? Things that were outside of my skill set at the time. And there was just like one tiny little, you know, like a few shelves with information. And I was just always knew that there had to be some centralized place where people could go get information and not feel shame, you know, Um, because we just don't talk about sex. We just expect it to mysteriously perfectly happen and to figure out like what we like and don't like in our bodies and our, our self-worth and self-love around, around sex. So I bought the domain names for the sex ed in 2008, actually. Wow. Um, for the sex ed, the sex ed show, the all sort of variations of it. And I thought it was going to be something I'd do in my sixties, like as sort of my life's work. And then, you know, life and faith, fate intervened and I launched it officially in 2018. So we're a multimedia platform. The podcast is one part of it, but I'm super proud of the fact that we have a really comprehensive website with essays from experts on everything from, orgasm breathing to uh, postpartum yoga to anal sex 101 to what is normal really asking that question like what do we think of as normal and how do we redefine that for ourselves and question the system we've all been brought up in we have a library um, where you can find books from everything from parenting resources to erotica to um, history to social justice. We have a sexpedia, wow. which is a living glossary of terms. Um, Amazing. Because I often get, especially like, um, I think in the sex positive space on the internet tends to be like really, I would say into cancel culture. And I don't think it leaves a lot of room for people who are on a journey of education. And so I got a lot of my straight guy friends actually coming to me privately and asking me questions like, what does this word mean? Or, and telling me that they don't feel comfortable like asking that publicly. Wow. So that sexpedia is to also fulfill, you know, the, those needs to um, create some, some language and devices for us to be able to come together and talk about all these things that still remain shrouded in so much taboo and shame and fear. Wow. Thank you so much for your service. I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be more happy that you exist and that you're doing this. It's, it really is a movement to kind of undo, you know, the, the, the confines and the boxes we build around ourselves and the sort of small minded, you know, like, pinpoint of perception around our bodies and sex and and who we really are. I mean, all of us come because somebody had sex. 
it's really also my mission. And I have, I have a new book coming out this fall with Sounds True Macmillan called Sex, Health, and Consciousness. That is kind of a guidebook. It's quite personal. Um, sort of a guidebook, but on the premise that everything we think we know about sex is coming from people who didn't learn from people who didn't learn all this ancestral trauma going so back. And at the very Mm. basis of it, we are need to understand that the word itself, sex has a much more expansive definition than we give it. Sex does not need to include penetration. It doesn't need to include an orgasm. It doesn't need to be an act you do with another person. Your sexual energy is one in the same as your creative energy, your life force energy. Um, Some people might refer to it as prana or mana or chi. Mm -hmm. And that's a very powerful energetic force that you can harness for all sorts of things. But understanding the power of sexual exchange with another person, even, I don't feel like we're educated ourselves about the power of sex and our own sexuality before we give that agency away to another person, generally very young, to be like, show me what I like, you know, Mm -hmm. especially for it's not just young women because I think we've done a lot of damage to men and I think we've, we've kept them from um, nurturing inclusive spaces that allow them to, to unpack the, you know, the many centuries of ancestral trauma they've gone through and we haven't held, held them in a space that allows them to be nurturing or be vulnerable you know, we just sort of have these expe- expectations about what masculinity is and how it's linked to virility and prowess. What if you don't fit in that? Or what if you question that? And for, for young women too, it's again, this idea of, I, I think when, when we learn about sex really early, it should coincide with learning about self-esteem, self-worth, self-love. And that the idea, I think it's unfortunately, most of us learn this idea that Um, our desirability or our sexuality is linked to someone else's validation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who are you sleeping with? What have you, you know, it's even, even as adults at at a cocktail party or something, right? right? It's like your worth is based on who you're having sex with, how much sex you're having, all these things. And that gets set up so early So even adults who are unhappy in a relationship or the also what's interesting to me is that, you know, sex is like, okay, think about an athlete learning a sport or an athlete that's good at a sport. Like I've taken, I've taken up surfing in the last year, which I fucking love. I hope I'm allowed to swear on this podcast and I'm super dedicated to it. But in order to do anything, you really have to devote the time and attention. And it doesn't just like happen. And if you don't do it for a while, it's like you get back on the board and you're kind of rusty. Um, so sex is something that you actually have to make the time for and you have to work on in, a rela- in any relationship. And so I think that that is where people put it in a different category as something for their overall wellness than they would like, oh, I know that I need to meditate every day for what, how, you know, however long you do, or I know I need to go for a run or I know I need to like, whatever it is that you do for your mental health. I don't think people put their sexuality in that category. It's like siloed from ourselves. Mm, That's really interesting. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. And even like you said, if it, if it's just about acknowledging it as a power and an energy in your body, it, not necessarily the physical act, if you, let's say you don't have a partner or you, you know, but to give it, to have reverence for your sexual being as much as any other part, your, you know, your spiritual being or your, you know, like your body, taking care of your body or your health and all of that. It's like, it's part of it. Like it's about, it's about including it in that holistic approach to who we are, right? That's the whole point of the sex ed is the whole, and this new book too is then the point of the sex ed is sex, health, and consciousness that they're linked. Mm. It's like, if you want to take the chakra system, for example, right? I don't know if your listeners mm-hmm. are familiar with the chakra system, but it's sort of these energetic bodies that we're, we have, and they run from the base, from your perineum. Um, up to your crown. And it's like, those are all interconnected. So, you know, I tend to think that people like, it's almost like they're separating off their genitals from the rest of their body. And during the day, um, 
you know, like think about your breath, uh, when you're in a yoga class or something, or if, or if you're surfing, you think about your breath a lot because sometimes you're held down for long periods underwater. We need to be integrating our breath to our genitals, or we need to be thinking about how our genitals feeling even right now. Like, how do your genitals feel? Ask yourself, are they sticky, tingly, wet, dry, numb? Like you can tell me it's not uncomfortable maybe for you to tell me how your leg feels right now. Right. Right. But how many times during the day when you're not having sex, you're not going to the bathroom or, you know, inserting a menstrual product. Do you think about just like how that part of your body feels like just even tuning in like simply. I love what you're doing. I think it's so important. It's like, let's shatter all that, that taboo around what is part of our holistic being. And I think I just appreciate you. And I want you to tell everyone where we can find you. Um, you can find uh, the sex ed at the sex ed.com. You can find our podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find our Instagram at the sex ed, and you can find me at Goldilocks LG on Instagram. <laughs> 